What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be going over pushback. And in this case it's going to affect both of our characters, but you can manage this to um, account for either the player that got hit, or the player that is doing the attacking, whatever you would prefer. We are doing this, even though it's a pretty simple episode admittedly, uh, before we're doing the launcher episode, because we're going to be using essentially the exact same function and some of the same logic to do the, the launchers episode. So. The launchers episode will be referring to hitting your opponent up into the air so that you can prepare to air combo them. Obviously that's a bit more complicated, not necessarily launching them into the air, that's not too bad, but making it possible for you to act after you hit them into the air, we'll say, is the more complicated part here. So for this episode, again we're doing pushback, so what that means is when we hit our opponent, they are going to move backward and so are we. So, you can see this cube in the background is for reference. We're going to put our heads kind of right in the middle. So you can see we're right in the middle. Okay, we're right there. When I hit my opponent, he gets pushed back a bit. You can see already we are off of the cube. So both the enemy and the player doing the attacking, so you and the enemy, get pushed back slightly when doing the attack. You can't really notice it, uh, which is good. You don't want to necessarily see your, your opponent like fly backward. But you can see it when you see, when you can actually tell after three or four hits, we will no longer be able to hit our opponent. You can see we've actually spaced ourselves out enough. Now you can modify the knockback value all you want, so it only takes like one or two hits. Some moves will have more, some will have less, some might have none, things like that. So that part's not too bad. The other thing to note here is we can actually implement uh, different pushbacks for different states of the enemy. So for example, if they're in the air, you might not want to push them back to help you combo. If they're standing here idle, then do more pushback, or if they're blocking, do more pushback. So in this case, you can see it takes, what, four or five hits to get us off of this. But if the enemy is blocking, and I do pushback, you can see he has been pushed back significantly farther than my player has, the player doing the attack. Let's get into it so we can make it happen. Again, this should be a pretty short episode in terms of the actual functionality, we did not have to do a lot to make this happen because Unreal makes it nice and easy for us. So, now that we have our characters all set up, and if you if you, if this is the first episode you're watching or you'd like to catch up on the series, I will leave a link in the iCard in the top right corner of the video that will bring you back to the very first episode of the entire series. We're like 26 episodes in now. Let's get started. In our character class, we're going to add a new function and this is really just preference you don't actually have to add a new function here if you don't like but last episode or one of the, the prior episodes we added a function called collided with proximity hitbox and this was kind of to do some of the logic that was originally getting put into take damage and kind of export that out because in programming in general especially in c++ it's a good idea to kind of break up your your functionality into different functions. That's the whole point of them. And take damage is becoming one monster function. So he's got all this in him, which is pretty long. Uh, I'm pretty lenient with the spacing, like I space things out quite a lot, so that helps as well. It's not a huge function, but it can be hard to debug just by looking at it. So what I actually did is added a new function called perform pushback, which will occur within the take damage function, but it's essentially breaking it out, that way you don't have to have all this logic in one function. So, you're going to want to add this function, void perform pushback, we need our pushback amount, and if the player was blocking at the time. You could use this boolean to determine anything, like if you, again, if you want to change the amount of pushback based on the state they're in, you can use this right here, instead of is blocked or has blocked or whatever, feel free to change it to fit your needs. And in take damage, just add a float pushback amount. Because we're going to have the hitboxes include the pushback amount, simply because different moves can add different pushbacks. Like a, a very long kick might send your opponent flying backward quite a bit, but a small jab might only push him back just a tiny bit. So, have this pushback amount in here, and then make this void push, uh, perform pushback function. See, I haven't changed anything else. Didn't need to add any variables or anything like that. Just add those two things. 
just for those that are being really, really cautious, I have added a new variable or a new character state enum, but we are not going to use that today. That is for next episode. It was part of my testing. Usually, I do these videos one week at a time, but I kind of had to test to plan for how I wanted to prepare this video. So don't worry about this, but feel free to add this now if you want. I will definitely mention it next episode anyway. Now, before we get into the take damage function and some of the things we changed, let's go over the hitbox actor and kind of see what we want to change there. So for this, you don't have to add any new functions or anything, but I did add a pushback distance again because we want the distances that the characters are pushed back different for their attacks. If for whatever reason you don't want that, feel free to skip this variable. But just made a new float pushback distance. Then in hitbox actor CPP, just set it to be zero on uh, in the constructor. So by, by default, it will not push the enemy back or you back at all. All right, now here's where we're gonna get into some of the take damage stuff where we actually use the pushback amount. I'm going to go into the blueprint first where we call take damage, that way you can see where it's coming from. For those that are familiar with the series, you might have seen this part before, but what we're gonna be doing here is essentially adding changes to our hitbox logic to incorporate the new variables. So, if you go into your event graph of your anim BP, where we have the anim notifies for the attack active, we have function create active hitbox, which we've been adding a ton of stuff to recently. Hits on time, blocks on time. Well, now we have our pushback distance. So go into your variable, or go into your function, excuse me, click on your node. As always, go to your inputs, hit plus, new parameter. Then, in the new box that pops up, type in pushback distance, or whatever, pushback amount, whatever. Doesn't matter, just push back if you want. And then make it a float. And we're gonna do, again, what we've been doing this whole time. We drag off the pushback distance. I'm trying to make it as neat as possible. So this bottom line here is the pushback distance. And I just go ahead and set the pushback distance that we created in the code file, right? So this is the hitbox that was spawned. This hitbox actor BP derives from the code file. So if you follow the blue line, this one right here, you can see we're setting the pushback distance, the variable we made in code, to the value that we give it in the input here, in this input parameter. So I'm giving it a value of 200. Now that our pushback distance is set, we can ignore the rest of this. This has been discussed in other episodes, so don't worry about that. But here we go, so we've set this. So now the last thing we need to do is go into our hitbox actor. Here we go. And of course, just add our pushback distance to the take damage function. Again, if you've been following the series, you will know all this, uh, where all this comes in. But basically, once the hitbox is spawned, we then check if it's collided with the player, if it's us or the enemy player, and then if it's the enemy and it was a strike hitbox, then make the enemy take damage, make the appropriate player take damage. In this case, we're just going to refresh our take damage node. Since we added a new variable and take damage was already here, you most likely won't have the variable here. So you'll have damage hits done, blocks done, and pushback probably won't exist. If you refresh the take damage node, you should be able to see the pushback amount pop in. And looking at this now, I probably should have called this pushback distance, but it doesn't matter. So just refresh both of these, and then just literally type in pushback distance or get pushback distance. Since we're in our hitbox actor, this is you don't need to drag off the blue line or anything. And then just drag it into the pushback amount. In the take damage function, what we do is we check if the player is blocking. In this case, they are not blocking. And then we go ahead and check if the other player exists to make sure that we don't get a crash or some sort of error. Once they've landed a hit, we want to perform pushback. We perform pushback on the other player, so the, play that, the player that has landed the hit, and we also perform pushback right here on the player taking damage. So other player is the player causing the damage. The one that just says perform pushback is the player that is taking the damage. Feel free to change your pushback amounts here or not call one or the other if you have a different design in mind. 
And again, in this case, both players get pushed back by the pushback amount. Okay. Else, if the player was blocking, we do the exact same thing, perform pushback for the player that has landed the hit. Even though the hit was landed against the block, we still want to push them back. In fact, Street Fighter V was the reference I used for this video. It actually pushed the players back farther when they were blocking. Feel free to change it to whatever you'd like to be. What I actually did was in my perform pushback right here, I had this bull has block that I mentioned earlier, and I'm using that to determine what to do with the player. The reason I did this is because it helps me in the future uh, not have to change this value in the take damage function. It's basically the idea of instead of having a bunch of random numbers separated in your code file, you have one place where you change all your logic about it. It's just kind of a cleanliness thing. It does add a little bit of extra work because you have to add this, this true or false every time. You can see here, in this case, the attacker, of course, has not blocked, and the player getting hit has not blocked. But in this case, the attacker has not blocked, and the player getting hit has blocked. That's why the boolean is true. So you should only have one true out of those four cases. We need to determine these four cases as well. So in our perform pushback function, the last thing we need to do is determine how far to launch the character if we want to change it based on if they've blocked and things like that, and also what direction we want to launch the character. If the opponent has blocked, or if the, if the player getting pushback has blocked, then we're going to do this logic. Else, we're going to do this logic. Now, this could also be separated into a better function. Essentially, all this is doing at the moment is, okay, if we blocked and we're facing this way, launch us this way. If we're facing the other way, launch us this way. Else, if we haven't blocked and we're facing this way, uh, launch us this way. If we haven't blocked and we're facing the other way, launch us this way. So it's the exact same logic all four times. Again, feel free to make functions and divide this up as you see fit. However, this launch character function is a function from Unreal. We did not make the launch character function. It is inherited from a character. What it does is it basically applies a force to your character. You can see it's an F vector, which is why this first parameter I'm putting in as F vector and then three amounts. So let me show you what it looks like without all this craziness going on. If we do launch character F vector, this is our first parameter. And then there's also two booleans afterwards, this function asks for. So this is what launch character looks like. But now we have to fill out our F vector with the values we want. It will depend on the way your scene is set up. For me, the X value is not one we want to mess with. If you look at your level, you can see my X value is the depth. Now, if we were doing a Tekken style game, this is perfectly fine. Currently, we are not. We, we will do some episodes on Tekken-related mechanics. For right now, we don't want to send the player at all in the X direction. So we're going to leave that alone, comma. Now, the Y axis is our left and right axis. That's the axis we want to change for pushback. So that's where we put our pushback amount. In this case, this line right here, you can see I've written negative pushback amount when the player is flipped. That is just because of the way the forces work in my scene. If the character is flipped, we want to push them in the negative direction because that's the proper pushback amount for the way my scenes are set up. But for now, just know this will depend on how your scene is set up. I'm stressing that because it's very easy to mess this part up. Um, I did it myself. I did not put negative and was wondering what was going on. So make sure you're paying attention to where your forces have to go. Negative pushback amount. Lastly, uh, we don't want to necessarily do anything with our z-axis yet, so we will use the z-axis when we're launching characters. Uh, literally, I know the function is called launch character, but it's true, it's what we will be using, because we will want to launch the players up in the air. So we will use the z-axis then. For now, we're not going to do anything with it, so we want 0.0f. There you go. I'm going to delete this now that we've kind of defined the function. 
you can see also that the pushback amount here was multiplied by two because the player was blocking. All right, now that we have our pushback implemented, we can go ahead and check out something. Now, this is a new level in the game. Um, the camera is admittedly a bit far away and so are the player spawn just based on the way I, I set it up, but I've been playing around with it. Uh, playing around with the different camera levels and such. So thank you so much to my friend Shadow Magnus, Pedro, and drop his name right there. Uh, he has worked on some levels for me for the fighting game. He's got another one in progress as well. It looks so great, uh, and I'm so excited to use them. If you'd like to give him any support, he, I did put his art station down below if you want to go check him out. Very, very, very nice guy. From those in the Discord, you, you will know that uh, he helps us pretty much every step of the way. So thank you so much, Pedro. Appreciate you, buddy. And this is looking great. I can't wait to show off future versions and the other level. We'll drop the other level next time. But, yeah. So, that's basically it for today's tutorial. I did want to show you kind of the reason that it's good to have the attacker get pushed back as well. If you corner an opponent, like right now he's up against the wall, he can't back up anymore. But I will eventually move out of the range of attacking distance. So if I were to keep spamming the same attack, he would still have a moment where he could act on that. All right, guys, that's it for me. So I'm Sean the Bro. If this video helped you, please, please, please subscribe. It helps me more than anything else you can do for this channel. And it'll let me know that I'm doing a good job here with these fighting game tutorials and you're learning something. Speaking of the Discord, if you wanted any sort of assistance with any of the topics we covered today or anything that you had issues with or ideas you had, the link is in the description. I can't put it in the iCard. YouTube's weird. We've been over it. It's true. But it's in the description under Discord. So if you want to go join the wonderful community that we have, then feel free to do that. Lastly, guys, if you want to come support us on Twitch, on twitch.tv slash the road 27 we play Dark Souls games on Wednesday, so Souls Wednesday, and like horror games and Resident Evil games on Friday. We're currently doing Dark Souls Remastered and Resident Evil 4. Alright guys, I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one where we do air launchers. Bye everyone!